Hey there, it's Erin with Time Saving Templates and in this video I'm going to go over some different template options for tracking your inventory because if you have to track inventory I definitely feel for you because I used to have to track inventory for many years when I had my own jewelry business and if you're ready to take your inventory from chaotic to organized then let's go over a handful of these different template options which depending on if you have a handmade product or if you don't have a handmade product i have templates to help track your finished products i have a, all these different options and it's really going to be based on your preferences for how you want to track your data and, and that sort of thing so let me get into these examples and I'm starting at the top with number one. At the top is really the most comprehensive, uh, largest program I have. And then going down the list to the bottom is the simplest, uh, I wouldn't say easiest, because they've they're all meant to be easy, but the most simple spreadsheet where you're only just entering purchases. That's the simple inventory one. So they kind of have their, each one has their differences, but I'm kind of listing them in order of how comprehensive each one is. So with the first one, when you're selling a handmade item, this is really for when you want to track the raw materials that go into the handmade item. It consists of several different pages. These four pages are all linked together in order to save you time with the data entry. The first one at the top is um, really just a simple inventory page where you're going to enter all your purchases and those are purchases of your raw materials. So in the next page you're going to enter your finished items and you're going to assign the raw materials to that and that's actually a pricing worksheet page. Um, so it's in addition to tracking the raw materials, this is also going to um, calculate a recommended retail and wholesale price. And then the third page is um, the COGS page. Most of these columns will automatically populate based on what you enter in the pricing page. So all the item names, all the cost of your goods, um, the total cost per item name is going to populate. Um, you'll just have to enter your counts of how many have been made and how many have been sold and then it's going to add up here at the top the total cost of goods sold if that's something that you need to report for your tax purposes. And and then the fourth page is going to calculate the raw materials available. And I have another video that explains an entire example of using this template, but I just wanted to go over it really fast. So as you update items um, that have sold in this page, it's going to automatically deduct the raw materials that went into each item. So this page will list out all the raw materials and how many you have available. That way you can go through and see if you need to reorder the ones that you're low on. So that is the high volume inventory seller system. Moving on to the option number two, this is the finished items inventory and sales system. This is for tracking the actual finished items. So we're not tracking raw materials that go into the items, but the actual product that you're selling. So if you're just selling the supplies, um, vintage, if you're doing resale, so you're buying products at wholesale and then reselling them, or even if you do have a handmade business and you really want to get a handle on um, where what venues your products are, are assigned to and tracking those finished products of when they sell and, and when they're low on inventory, then this would be a good system to use too. So it's going to track both your inventory and your sales. It's going to have a sales summary page that's going to show you your total sales per month and per venue and per category. So you can also assign different uh, fees per venue or per payment type and you'll be entering in the sales into the front page and then um, you do need to have an item ID that is unique for the item and for the venue. So in order for all the links to update and work correctly, the next option, number three, is the annual inventory template. And 
This one is great if your main goal is you're just looking to report the beginning and ending inventory for tax purposes, which I have another video that goes over Schedule C and um, what you need to report for your inventory and how that works for U.S. sellers. Basically, this template is could be great for either raw materials or the finished products whatever you have to end up reporting. So this works great for you to, uh, throughout the year, um, be tracking your purchases into the spreadsheet. And then if you do a physical count of your inventory at the end of the year, then you'll be able to go in and update the actual count of your inventory in this um, particular worksheet. And the thing that really saves time with this worksheet is that it will after you complete a year, there's a macro that you can run that will reset the file for the new year. So if you're familiar with the Schedule C and reporting inventory, you um, the, the inventory amount that you report for ending inventory of the previous year becomes the beginning inventory of the new year. So the macro, the macro in the file, when you run it, it will automatically reset your ending inventory and move it over into your beginning inventory and then that way you can start over with a new year and continue adding your purchases and and you'll be ready to go to enter your ending inventory on the next when the next year ends okay so I'm gonna take a time out for a minute to show you a little inventory hack that I used for my business and this applies only if you're in the U.S. and have to report the Schedule C. So you'll see this is the Schedule C form, and I'm kind of just explaining some of the different parts of the Schedule C that have to do with inventory and COGS, which is uh, cost of goods sold. And the way it's set up, you know, is you track your beginning inventory right here. Um, that's at the beginning of the year, January 1st. And then you're tracking plus the purchases of new inventory throughout the year minus your inventory count at the end of the year equals your cost of goods sold. Or this is the hack that I used, option number two, and it's really just basic math. If you go with this example, you're going to do, you know, you're still going to do the beginning inventory. On January 1st, you're still going to track the purchases of new inventory, and then you're going to subtract your total cost of goods sold for the year, and that's going to equal ending inventory. So it was so much easier to just count or keep track of the cost of goods sold. So depending on which option you prefer, if you're going to go with method one and do you know an actual count of all your inventory at the end of the year, then go with the annual inventory worksheet where you can do that. But if you want to do option two, like I did, and again, I'm not a CPA or an accountant. Uh, my background's corporate compensation. So, you know, research what's good for your situation. But if you're like, yes, I want to track cost of goods sold and not count my inventory, then go with method two. You can use the cost of goods sold pricing worksheet. So it's linked together. Um, it'll price your items and track your cost of goods sold. Or the high volume seller system that we went over for option number one includes um, the pricing and cost of good worksheets. It's all linked together. So that's if you're in the US and you have to do that. But getting back to the next options, if all of that sounds super complicated to you and you want to just start really, really simple, there is option number four, the inventory tracking template, or option five, the simplest inventory worksheet that I have. So the inventory tracking worksheet is going to consist of two pages. One page where you enter the raw material name or description. You could even use this for finished items. So you're just going to enter the item name and then you're going to select from a drop down whether it was the item was purchased or it was used up in a project. If it was purchased, you will enter the quantity in the package and the price that you paid going to calculate your price per unit. If you're entering the item as being used up in a project, then you're going to enter how much you used in the project. So then there's a summary page that you click on that's going to um, 
you know, you refresh it and it's going to pull all that information from whether you purchased, how many you purchased, how many you used in a project, and it's going to give you the count of how many you have available. And then the simple inventory worksheet is, it's actually instant download. It's the simplest worksheet I have. You really just have one page where you're entering the items purchased. You're entering the quantity in the package, the price you paid, and it will calculate that price per unit. This worksheet is included in option one, the high volume seller system. So it's part of that, that package and it's linked with the other pages. Um, if you want to get it, this page just on its own, you can. It's also in the basic seller package. It does come in that package also, which is, has a few different templates for tracking sales and expenses and inventory. Uh, so this one I like because you can also use it to compare different vendors. So you could list out all your purchases or you could list out potential purchases. And as you're entering, you know, the different prices and different amounts and packages, you can compare that, that price per unit to really see what is the best deal for different vendors because um, if they're breaking things up or, you know, it's different different uh, quantities, you want to make sure you're comparing apples to apples. And um, so that's the simple inventory worksheet. So that really sums up five main options I have for tracking your inventory. And um, hopefully that will help you get started in getting your inventory organized. And also look out for the different package options I have because um, some of these templates come with a package of other templates and it's at a bigger discount than buying them individually. I know the high volume system comes in the best seller tool package. I have the annual inventory included in, I believe that's in the best seller package. And then the options four and five come in the basic seller package. So just check those out if you're also interested in some of the sales and expenses tracking templates as well. And I hope that helps you decide what is going to work best for your situation. Good luck with all your inventory tracking. And um, remember, I'm here to help you streamline your spreadsheets and get organized with these Excel templates. Thanks.